Hi, this is Joel Rosenberg, founder and editor-in-chief of All Israel News, and of course, our sister site, All Arab News, uh, reporting from Jerusalem. And I'm honored to have uh, Ambassador Danny Danone. Uh, he was an ambassador for, uh, to the United Nations for Israel for five very tumultuous and very uh, fascinating years, and actually very productive years as well. We're going to get into that in a moment. We're going to get into his fascinating and really uh, important new book, In the Lion's Den. But first of all, Ambassador, welcome to All Israel News. It's, uh, it's great to see you again. Thank you, Joel, for having me. It's great to see you again. I hope next time we'll do it in person. I look forward to that. Thank you. So we'll get to the book in a moment, but I have to ask you, we are on the verge, it would look like, of uh, perhaps the collapse of the uh, bennett Lapid government. Certainly, an, uh, you know, there's going to be a, a, a vote of no confidence coming up here in the next few days. Um, we're at a 60-60 split. You are a, a very proud Likudnik. Um, uh, first of all, are you running again? Second of all, what do you expect to see in next, whether it's the next few days or weeks, do you think this government will last? And what, give us a bit of your political prognostication. Uh, are we going back to elections? So first, I certainly hope that we will see a new government. I think what we see today with the existing government is the lack of governance, like lack of safety. You know, we saw the wave of terror attacks in the last few days. Uh, and I think it is impossible to continue the way we, we govern today uh, when you actually have to depend on a radical Muslim uh, list in the coalition. Uh, I hope maybe we'll be able to form a new government within the existing Knesset. That will be the best uh, because then we will not have to go for another cycle of elections. But if we cannot do that, uh, then the second option will be to go for general elections. I know people are quite fed up from elections but it's much better than what we have today. I think every day that we see a weak government, uh, our adversaries feel it. And unfortunately, we see that they take advantage of it. And if, there, if we do go to actual elections, of course, right now, Likud is projected to increase their seats from number maybe 30 or 30 currently to 35 to 38, possibly more. Uh, do you intend to run? So I definitely intend to go back to a, a public service. I'm a proud member of the Likud. I'm chairman of World Likud. So once there will be a decision to go for a, for election, then the, my time will come to make that decision. But I made it very clear that you know I, I came back with a lot of experience and I intend to use that experience for the benefit of the people of Israel. Well, just to be clear, uh, All Israel News is a nonprofit and thus a non partisan site, but we are covering all the players and uh, it, it's never a dull moment. So we've, we've had a lot of uh, a lot of interesting things to cover. So so let's get in this book, uh, because uh, in the lion's den is uh, we're going to name it our uh, our book of the month for May, because I, I just finished reading the advanced copy. It's excellent. And it really deals with a very important period of time in Israeli history, Israeli American history, Arab Israeli history. But it does so from a, a unique perspective. You were the ambassador uh, to the United Nations first in the in the last year of the Obama Biden administration, and then through the four years of the Trump administration, which gave you a unique vantage point to see uh, two entirely different approaches uh, to U.S.-Israel relations and the Middle East. First of all, you, you got to tell our evangelical uh, viewers, there are not only evangelicals, of course, but why did you choose this biblical reference to Daniel in the lion's den? Let's start there. Well, the first day, you know, serving at the UN, I, I found out that uh, speaking about our religion is a great advantage. Uh, and uh, when you look back at my speeches, you know, I read from the Bible uh, and I use the Bible as part of my diplomacy. And it was very effective. So when, when I look back at the stories of the Bible, I felt myself like Daniel in the lion's den, you know, being there by myself. Uh, I, I recall the moment when the U.S. Was, start, was pushing a resolution against Israel in the Security Council, and I was sitting there by myself. I had no one to rely on. And on that moment, I felt that, you know, it reminded me of the stories of the Bible, including the story of Daniel in the lion's den. Uh, we do have friends in the U.S., we do have friends in the U.N., but there are certain moments that it's only us, only us, that, where we have to be strong and we have to believe. 
And that's my message in the book. So you're referring specifically to December of 2016, just just weeks before President Obama left office, in which uh, the, the story you describe, and you pretty much open the book uh, pretty soon into the beginning of your book with this story, you talk about how the Obama administration was supporting uh, behind the scenes uh, Resolution 2334, uh, which roundly and seriously condemned Israel uh, for building uh, Jewish homes, Israeli homes in Judea, uh, which is uh, remains uh, a big uh, controversy, except that traditionally the U.S. vetoes a resolution like this. In this case, they abstained and 14 nations on the U.N. Security Council uh, voted against. Uh, you've, you, it's very rare, wouldn't you say, that, that a, an Israeli ambassador to the U.N. is that alone, that doesn't even have the support of the United States. Uh, that for me, Joel, was the hardest moment in, in five years when I realized that I'm fighting not only the Palestinians, not only the EU, I'm actually fighting the US, the closest ally of Israel. Uh, and it was hard. It was hard because not on, only because of the content of the resolution, which was shameful. It called our presence in the whole city of Jerusalem flagrant violation of international law. Uh, not only the language, but also the way it was done. The US uh, administration, chose to do it behind our back. They were not answering our phone calls. I was trying to put Prime Minister Netanyahu together on a call with President Obama. And the answer I got was that the president is on a vacation in Hawaii and he will not be able to take that call. That moment I realized that I have no one to rely on. I had to defend Israel by myself and that's exactly what I did. And it actually didn't represent the strong bond we have with the US, with the American people, the common values, uh, the same enemies we, we have, unfortunately. Uh, it was a very hard moment for me, but you know, a few weeks after that, uh, we had uh, a new president coming into the White House. Ambassador Nikki Haley came to the UN and, and we started uh, to make changes and repair the damages. Well, yeah, you, you describe uh, just one year later, almost to the day that uh, President Trump announced that he was moving the United States Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Then you went into another Lions Den battle with hundreds, well, well at least dozens and dozens and dozens of countries condemning uh, the U.S. position. Describe both the, the, the feeling of seeing the United States finally keep a promise that it had made back in 1995, but also seeing uh, the torrent of, of opposition inside uh, the UN Security Council and General Assembly. So, you know, Jolie, in my book, In the Lions Den, I, I try to describe, you know, also the personal stories. And I describe the moment I, I called Ambassador Nikki Haley, and I told her we have to prepare ourselves to the debate in the UN. Both of us decided not to come to the ceremony that you attended with many evangelical leaders who came especially to Jerusalem, but we decided to stay in New York to, to protect the, the decision. And I told her, uh, Nikki, let's take a moment before we go into the uh, counting the numbers and, and, and take a moment to think together and, and project about the historical moment we are actually sharing today. That, uh, and, and it was uh, meaningful that we, for one minute, we, we thought about the significance that uh, what is going to happen. Uh, and I will cherish that moment. From there, we. We went into a diplomatic uh, battle at the General Assembly. It wasn't easy, uh, but it was important to send a clear message that we don't back off of, of Jerusalem. It is, it is our eternal capital and the US stood with us. And, and look what happened today when we look back, you know, we, we got two countries joining the US, Guatemala and Honduras, uh, and nobody is actually speaking about it anymore. Uh, it was the right decision uh, at the right time. Yeah, and, and you say that, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting story. And, I, and again, I commend your book In the Lion's Den to our readers and, and our viewers because it, 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 it takes, the book takes you inside these debates um, from Ambassador Denon's uh, vantage point. And again, I, I realize that you are trying to walk a very interesting and careful line in the book between being critical of Democrats in general uh, most Democrats are very pro-Israel, not all, um, but but you're describing the sharp contrast 
between one administration and the other. And, you know, how does Israel navigate in a world in which um, you're trying not to be partisan in, in terms of U.S. politics, but you still have to defend Israel when you're getting different reactions from different types of presidents? You know, one of the, the heroes which I spoke about in the book was uh, Eli Wiesel of Blessed Memory. Uh, and uh, I, I chose to put a very important uh, sentence. He, he told me during one of our meetings before he passed away. And he told me that I should always pay more attention uh, to the threats of our enemies than to the promises of our allies. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the UN, I, I, I realized that that was uh, very true of what he said to me. That yes, we, we have allies, we have a lot of promises, but at the end of the day, we, we have to be there to defend ourselves. Uh, and with both administrations, we did it. You know, also with uh, Matro Samantha Power, we did great things, but nobody remembered it because when you came, with, you come with a bad resolution uh, at the end of your term, that would that would be your legacy. And unfortunately, that was the decision of uh, President Obama and Secretary Kerry. Uh, that was their legacy to come against Israel, uh, to isolate Israel. Uh, we overcame that resolution, but we still have to deal with the damages. Yeah, and, and you do make the point. I, I had emphasized on Resolution 2334 a moment ago about um, uh, the condemnation of building settlements um, and, and, and expanding settlements uh, in Judea and Samaria. But but you're talking about at the core of the resolution was was uh, what you pointed out, which was the issue of Jerusalem and that the idea that Israel was somehow um, – you know, uh, illegally occupying or, or, or operating inside the capital city of the state of Israel, that really uh, crossed a red line for many Americans as well as Israelis. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you, you know, when people come to Israel and they walk in the old city of Jerusalem, they realize that it's, it's a united capital. It's open to all the religion. And, and you know, I, I realize that in order to bring the UN uh, the real facts, you have to bring them to Israel. So I brought with me more than 100 UN ambassadors in different delegations, and I took them to the city of David and to the Christian quarter, to the Muslim quarter, to the Jewish quarter, and they realized that, you know, in order to protect the freedom of religion, Jerusalem must stay united. So I think it's, it's important to, to fight about this issue. And, and sometimes we hear different language coming from different people, most of them are not knowledgeable, and that's why we have to work harder. And that's one of the goals of the book, is to educate people about what's happening in Israel. So a couple of other questions, and I, I, I'm respectful of your time, but you, you've written such an interesting book, it's hard not to uh, deal with so many issues that you bring up. Um, one of them is that you had a number of private, uh, very quiet meetings with Arab ambassadors, um, Muslim ambassadors, uh, you even took um, one of the first uh, uh, trips uh, in, the, in your to an Arab country that we didn't yet have peace with. In this case, the United Arab Emirates. Um, but you don't spend you don't really talk about the Abraham Accords in the book. But uh, first, why not? But two, um, you you were part of some of those early. Um, uh, bridge building exercises, and you talk about it, even if you don't mention names, but but talk about your diplomacy and, and what was happening prior to the Abraham Accords, but also why don't you deal with the Accords in the book? So, as you mentioned, you know, the, the activities that I was engaged, they were the cornerstone for, for the Accords. We actually started to work together with the Muslim ambassadors to fight radical Islam together at the UN, and by the way, not only with the country that you mentioned, also some country that we still don't have diplomatic relations with, important, big ones, you can name them. Uh, uh, and we collaborated, Joe. Go ahead, feel free to name them. So you know I'm talking about uh, Saudi Arabia. Yeah. And we collaborated with those countries uh, fighting the radicals in the region, in the heart of the UN. But it was all done uh, through proxies. And we had to meet in different locations. You know, I described in the book that, you know, I had to meet the ambassador of, of the UAE and we had to, to go to a different hotel room because we didn't want the media to see us uh, negotiating or speaking right. about some resolutions. And, and I, I'm very happy that today we see the fulfillment of the efforts. Uh, you know, the Abraham Accords for me was a, a, a dream. 
And for years, I encourage my colleagues in the Gulf to, to be public about what they really think about Israel. And I'm so proud it, it happened. You know, the, the actual signing was not uh, done when I was there. That's why I chose not to, I to take credit. And, and I tell you something I learned in, in diplomacy, that if you want to be effective, sometimes you give the credit to others. You know, unlike in, in politics, you know, I was in the Knesset and government for many years, you have to fight for credit all day long. <laughs> uh, uh, that's the butter and bed of every politician. But when you are a diplomat, you do a lot of things behind the scenes. And, and I found it fulfilling, you know, to, to achieve so many things, even with, uh, without claiming the credit for that. Two last questions, uh, but they're, they're pretty critical. One is the Russians and two are the evangelicals. So Russians. So you're talking about the lion's den, uh, Danny or Daniel, you in the lion's den. But if you were at the UN right now, uh, I mean, talk to me about your view of Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov uh, blasting, I mean, really in vicious language, in my view, uh, Israel and saying that the worst anti-Semites in the world have been Jews, uh, that that Hitler was Jewish. Um, And this doesn't seem to be an isolated incident. The number of tensions between Russia and Israel seem to be growing since the Ukraine invasion. What's your sense of things and how should Israel be responding? So I believe in moral clarity. And that's what I demanded from our allies in, in the UN. I told them, even if you are in minority, you have to vote with us because that's your moral clarity. So I think standing with Ukraine is, is the right thing to do. And I'm proud that Israel did it at the UN. We can never accept that language. The equation to the Nazis is unacceptable. The language that was used is unacceptable. Uh, And I think that on those issues, we we don't back down. We we have to be very clear about that. Uh, And I said it at the beginning of the conflict that no one can actually use uh, the Holocaust uh, in order to gain uh, points in in this crisis. Uh, Regarding the evangelicals, you know, for me, very strong allies. You know, I, I was working with evangelicals for years and at the UN, I found them standing with Israel whenever we needed them. And it was important. It was important because many people always ask me about, you know, conflicts with the American administration, American people. And I tell them, listen, if you ask the American people, you will see the, the love to the state of Israel and to the people of Israel. And I think it's not only the evangelicals, but the evangelicals are very proud of it and are very loud about it, and that's why we love them so much. Do you think that, do you think that there's enough members of Knesset who, who see that or are acting on it? I, I think it, it, my, my sense of it is that there's a growing uh, belief within the Knesset that the evangelicals are important, but it still seems like there's a relative small handful of people who are actively working on building that alliance with evangelicals, not just in the United States, but worldwide and trying to expand and deepen it. Um, how, what's your read? Does, does the Knesset overall, um, do enough people see the importance of the evangelical relationship? Uh, what more could be done to, to broaden and deepen that relationship? So in, in general, the Knesset uh, members usually focus on domestic issues and that's bad, but you know, they have to be focused on, on re-elections, on politics, on, on uh, dealing with the media. They don't spend too much time on any global issues. Uh, for me, it wasn't the case. For me, I was always fascinated about building bridges, making alliances. Uh, I worked with the you know, evangelical for, for uh, decades uh, and I will continue to do that. I, I think we should do a better job in educating the new member of Knesset, uh, bringing them to see the community, to see the love, You know, I recall, Joel, I took a delegation of mayors to the U.S. many years ago, uh, and I spoke in in, in one of the churches. And when they saw the love I received at at that church, they will never forget it. And every time I I visit the city, they tell me, Danny, remember we went in Florida, and people stood up and and cheered when you spoke about Jerusalem and about uh, the state of Israel. I think the more MKs and the more Israelis will see that uh, unconditional love, unconditional support, uh, they will appreciate it more. Well, I I agree with you on that, and I'm happy to help you or any member of Knesset 
uh, on that issue. And of course, all Israel News is trying to become a, and create a voice in a world where, you know, even juggles feel like we're in the lion's den as well. When we deal with the media, the extreme bias, the anti-Christian, anti-Jewish, anti-Israel, uh, anti-moral, biblical, Judeo-Christian values, it's, uh, I think there's a lot of common cause and uh, we need to keep working together. Uh, Ambassador, thank you so much. Your book, uh, In the Lion's Den, is fantastic. Uh, we strongly encourage People I'm sending you uh, there you go. <laughs> with uh, dedication, Joel. You'll get it in the next few days. I look forward to it, and I'll be happy to All give you a copy. All my friends can order it on, on Amazon, a thousand novels, and I'm sure they will enjoy the read. Amen. Thank you so much, Ambassador. Thank you very much, Joel. Thank you. Thank you.